Japan finds itself between a rock and a hard place. Despite a post-World War II ambition for demilitarized peace, tensions are rising in the East. Fortunately, the land of the rising sun is not alone in the creation, as new collaborations with the UK's Tempest program will help Japan achieve its aim. But will this partnership of East and West soothe the friction with China and North Korea, or will it escalate it? The Tempest program, which is designing Britain's next great aerial combat vehicle, is led by a group of British defense aerospace companies who believe the enterprise will generate a hefty 25.3 billion pounds over the next 30 years of the project. So news that this program will make a bigger step outside of the United Kingdom's sovereignty is something everyone is taking note of. Plans for a joint venture between the British and Japanese have been unveiled, with the flagship project being a prototype fighter jet. The collaboration between the respective research programs Tempest and FX, is the next step in the expanding military relationship, but not the first time technologies have been shared between the two nations. Air-to-air -air missile tech was a previous exchange, yet details of this latest announcement marks the first time both partners will develop something together from the ground up. Britain has already agreed to invest 30 million pounds towards the planning, digital designing, and manufacturing of innovative developments with the Ministry of Defense stating that a further £200 million of funding will lead the development of a full-scale demonstrator power system. Apparently, this will be built at Rolls-Royce Filton facility in Bristol. Japan, meanwhile, will turn to their own Mitsubishi Heavy Industries and Ishikawajima Harima Heavy Industries. The latter had previously been selected to develop the $40 billion FX, likely to be designated the F3 by 2035 when it is expected to enter service. This stellar partnership has been recognized as a win-win opportunity by the likes of Richard Burthon, UK Director of Future Combat Air. He sees investing and working together with Japan as a boost to national industries, as well as an opportunity to develop world-beating power technologies. Now that the door is open, other technologies connected to UK's combat air strategy will be looked at. For now though, the manned fighter jet remains the centerpiece. But for Japan, there is a hint of nervousness in the latest agreement. Questions will be raised about its own fighter propulsion efforts, so expect a degree of competition within the joint project. Some are even wondering how likely it is that their FX program will merge into the British-led project, leaving critics to ask whether Japan's reputation will be weakened with a technology team-up. What do we know about the Tempest at this stage? For starters, Rolls-Royce engineers have already previously evaluated advanced engine technology, so it's a natural next step for them to be examining the use of synthetic aviation fuel to reduce exhaust temperatures. At the same time, no details of expected performance have been released, so it's unclear if the so-called demonstrator engine will be installed in a flying testbed or used exclusively for ground-based static trials. It is at least known that the Tempest and the FX is going to be a twin-engine craft. However, expect many new and experimental technologies to be tested during the development phase. Initial concepts are continually maturing, and testing has already begun on a cutting-edge wearable cockpit, which could see a replacement to physical controls. Think augmented reality. Think virtual reality. Think digital displays projected directly inside the visor of a helmet, which can be configured to suit any mission. There are more fantastical concepts too, like a virtual co-pilot, taking on some of the pilot's responsibilities, and there's even the chance that this computer buddy could manifest as an avatar in the cockpit to interact with the user, according to BAE Systems themselves. But the sci-fi book doesn't end there. Trials for psychophysiological technologies, which includes eye tracking, as well as cognitive processes to better understand exertion, stress, workload, fatigue, are also part of the program's speculative possibilities. 
Looking closer at certainties through the Italian-based Leonardo, one of the European teams working alongside the RAF on the project, have disclosed that it has developed a new radar technology. This multifunction radio frequency system, or MRFS, is designed to collect and process unprecedented amounts of data, equivalent to the internet traffic of a large city. How that will help the MRFS work beyond the boundaries of a traditional radar is not quite clear at this stage, but some completed subsystems using the new tech have been successfully tested at their site in Edinburgh, Scotland. Could this mean the information war is the next military frontier, or could this restart a cold war of sorts? Time will tell. Turning to the FX now, it is expected that this craft will complete, perhaps surpass, the power of neighboring countries' aerial assets. After all, China and Russia are powerhouses of military presence, so Japan finds itself immediately competing with the big dogs. At this stage, the next craft, unofficially nicknamed Godzilla, will likely be bigger than the F-22 upon completion. It will also come with a fiber optic control system, the so-called fly-by-light system, as well as serpentine air intakes to further reduce its radar cross-section and heat signature during flight. There is talk of heat shields and an integrated bonded structure, likely made of composite materials, to reduce the overall weight. The aim here is to deliver higher flexibility for the air bases that the FX will operate from. Immediately, a stark contrast between Japanese and British conceptualizing can be seen, whereby the Tempest is focusing on pushing the pilot computer to get the edge over an opponent, whereas Japan is concentrating on the practical manufacturing aspect as the source of aerial supremacy. This difference in approach is further compounded by the IHI Corporation's jet engine propulsion systems. Exotic materials are being tested to keep weight down whilst increasing the engine's heat tolerance to as much as 3,272 degrees Fahrenheit or 1,800 degrees Celsius. The engine would be capable of pumping around 16.5 tons of thrust with afterburners. No doubt impressive, yet still slightly lower than the F-119 engines currently installed on US F-22 Raptors. But Japanese engineers are not going down without a fight. They have been toying with thrust vectoring nozzles for the engine, which, if successful, could provide the FX with some truly stunning mid-flight maneuverability. Given that such features are currently an integral part to Russian and Chinese fighters, it shines a light on how Japan's development is driven by the physical proximity to these military giants, a geographical reality not shared by the British program. Is this why Tempest is drifting towards integrating computers and pilots in the cockpit, or is Japan's focus on the fighters' tangibility a sign that they are behind the times? The FX is not without its state-of-the-art computer tech either. Even though technical specs remain shrouded in mystery, there is a strong likelihood for remote drone control capabilities. Apparently, the FX will be able to control up to three drone-like, loyal wingmen crafts a VR-style helmet-mounted display, no doubt shared between the Tempest systems, and even a radar that can double as a microwave weapon to fry enemy missiles. It would seem that Japan has every chance of trumping Tempest's sci-fi influences. But there are a few more strings to this fighter's bow. Self-defense jamming functions are a distinct possibility, as is the IFCF system, or Integrated Fire Control for Fighters, that could allow Japanese fighters and possibly US fighters too, to pull together their sensors and missile targeting capabilities, enhancing the accuracy of beyond visual range missiles. Expect at least six internally stowed weapons including, but not limited to, air-to-air -air missiles, air-to-ground missiles, and anti-ship missiles, as per standards for multi-role aircrafts. This is certainly shaping up to be an incredibly ambitious piece of military tech, so having a working prototype by 2024, with a first flight by 2028, have left some wondering whether the FX team has bitten off more than it can chew. Defenders, though, believe a series production by 2031, with it finally entering service by 2035, is more than feasible.
especially with the British collaboration. Whether or not The Tempest and FX live up to expectations is somewhat beside the point, because this collaboration will likely stimulate new ventures and tech as a side effect of pursuing these two extraordinary projects. In any case, both countries have fallen under a degree of healthy skepticism. After all, developing an all-new fighter jet is a tremendous undertaking, so many have wondered whether either nation has developed a strong business model that can execute without external support or collaboration. Are they punching above their weight because they couldn't do it alone? If you have a theory, please share it in the comments. Be sure to give a thumbs up in the support for future tech, and don't forget to subscribe for the latest videos on military tech. Thank you for watching. We'll see you in the next one.